Hey guys, ITP here. Okay, so here's a little background info. Earlier this year, I made the decision to sell all of my beloved consoles in order to fund a gaming PC. I can tell you right now though, that was not an easy decision. In fact, it was downright agonizing. I spent weeks stressing about it. I did so much research, but no matter what, I could never come up with a definite answer to so many of my questions. Is PC gaming really all that it's made out to be? How much am I going to miss my consoles? The exclusives? My game collection up there on my shelf? In the end though, I guess it all boiled down to one question. I'm going to be spending a lot of money on this setup, am I going to regret it? If that sounds familiar to you, hopefully I can help you out. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons that I've found by moving to PC gaming, and in the end, I'll talk about my experience as a whole, and whether or not I regret my decision. Just to be clear, this video is not about the PC versus consoles war. Both have their own appeal, their own strengths and weaknesses. In a perfect world, you would just choose both. Unfortunately, not everyone has that kind of time and money to dedicate to gaming, and will often have to make a difficult choice between the two. This video exists to provide some extra information, and hopefully make that choice a little easier for people. Alright, let's kick it off with some of the pros a gaming PC will provide. Performance This, to me, was the biggest factor in making my move to PC. Towards the end of the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360's life cycle, games were still looking great. In 2013 alone, we had Bioshock Infinite, Tomb Raider, The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto V. All stunning looking games, and I still have no idea what kind of black magic Rockstar worked to get GTA V up and running as well as it did on that generation of consoles. Visually, they all looked great. The problem was that the frame rate in some of these titles was starting to become pretty unbearable. Grand Theft Auto would frequently drop into the low 20s on both the PS3 and 360. So when the PS4 and Xbox One were announced, I was extremely excited. Not because the visuals were going to be even better, although that was definitely a bonus, but because the frame rate was finally going to smoothen out. Sadly, 1080p 60fps was only a reality for a very few select games on the new systems. And before long, games were already starting to stutter. Just look at Assassin's Creed Unity, The Witcher 3 and Fallout 4. These games have struggled to hold even a consistent 30fps. It was pretty disheartening to say the least. This is a non-issue on PC. If you invest in a decent build, say something like a recent i5 CPU and an RX 480, you can expect a consistent 60fps in the majority of games with the settings cranked up. But even if you choose to go with a more mid-range build or even low-range build, you can always tweak settings and lower graphics to find the performance that you are happy with. I'm not obsessed with having all games run at 60fps constantly by any means, but I can't stress enough how good it feels to have a game like The Witcher 3 running at a consistently high frame rate. It really feels like the way the game was intended to be experienced. Graphics I don't think too much needs to be said about this one. Games just look better on PC. If, like me, prior to purchasing a PC, you find yourself looking up all those PC vs PS4 vs Xbox One graphics comparisons videos, I can tell you right now, don't bother wasting your time with them. They really don't do the PC justice. Whether that's thanks to YouTube compression or not, I don't know. But trust me, when I say that seeing a game like Rise of the Tomb Raider maxed out on PC is a thing of beauty. And if you have a capable enough rig and monitor, you can even push your resolution past 1080p and up to 1440p or even 2160p. And it's not like you need an insane setup to achieve high settings in recent AAA titles. I'm running a single GTX 970 with a Skylake i5 CPU and 16GB of RAM. Every game I have tried so far has run beautifully at 1080p, and in some recent titles like Doom and Fallout 4, it even handles 1440p comfortably. With the recent release of Nvidia's GTX 1070 and 1080 cards, as well as AMD's RX 480, now is such a good time to build a PC. These are all excellent value cards for the performance they can spit out. Just check out some of Digital Foundry's frame rate test videos on these cards to get an idea of their power. Unlike some members of the PC Master Race would have you believe, games won't look totally unbelievably and unrecognizably better on PC. In the end, you will still be looking at the same game, but the PC really does make the visuals pop. If you are a fan of good looking games, then this is something you need to experience. Customization. I think this feature of the PC gets overlooked pretty frequently, which is strange, because I think if I could use one word to sell someone on getting a PC, it would have to be customization. 
I touched on it a little bit earlier with being able to tweak settings in games to find a graphics to performance ratio that works perfectly for you, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. The PC experience is built around the ability to customize and personalize. What kind of hardware is going into your build? Is this build for gaming, video editing, audio production, graphic design? Maybe it's for all of those things. If you ever get sick of using a keyboard and mouse, that's great. Just switch to a controller and kick back. While you're at it, bring up Netflix on that secondary monitor and binge on Daredevil while you play Stardew Valley. And when you start feeling nostalgic, bring up an emulator and start replaying favorites from your childhood. There's so much backwards compatibility to talk with consoles, but nobody seems to mention that the PC is the ultimate backwards compatibility machine. This is what it's all about, no limitations. It's in the name PC. This is your personal computer, your personal experience. The best catalogue of games. It's now a better time to be a PC gamer than any other. Why? Because of the amount of games. There's so many of them, far more than any other console ever. At the time of this video, there is just under 10,000 games on Steam. Now I'm not saying all of them are great, but with that many releases, there's going to be something that you're into. Whether that be the latest AAA titles, indie games, MMOs, RTS titles, point and click games, visual novels, first person shooters, racing games, fighting games, JRPGs, whatever. There's something here for all kinds. Not to mention the exclusives you will find on PC. Particularly, if you're an MMO or RTS fan, you are going to find the platform a worthwhile investment. Examples include World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, Starcraft, Civilization, Total War, the upcoming Star Citizen, The Sims, Pillars of Eternity, and Undertale, just to name a few. It's also worth mentioning that as the PC grows in popularity as a gaming platform, we are starting to see titles appear that would have been unheard of in the past. As a JRPG fan, I couldn't be happier. All of the Final Fantasy games seem to be popping up on Steam, as well as the Tales of series, the One Piece games, Valkyria Chronicles, The Legend of Heroes, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, as well as the Naruto games, the Neptunia series, and can you believe it, God Eater is even on its way very soon. There's also a ton of visual novels, including Clannad, Danganronpa, Corpse Party, If My Heart Had Wings, Eden, and the critically acclaimed Sakura franchise. The rising popularity of PC gaming has given these type of games another home, and this trend will only continue into the future. The bottom line here is that the PC has the biggest library of games available, and that number continues to grow at an increasingly faster rate all the time. A lack of games to play is something you will never have to worry about. The Price of Games So not only do you get the most expansive library of games to explore, the majority of these video games are going to come at a lower price tag when compared to the consoles. This even includes the latest AAA titles. For me, in Australia, I will usually find the PC version of a new game to be around $10 to $20 less than the PS4 or Xbox One counterpart. Not only that, but a lot of online stores will often add a 10%, 15%, hell, sometimes even a 20% discount on top of that upon the release of a new game. Truth be told though, Sony and Microsoft have been doing a pretty good job lately with game discounts by featuring frequent sales with decent savings. The PC, however, is in another league altogether. Obviously, you have Steam with their epic summer and winter sales, but even outside of that, there are so many different online stores to shop at. Some examples include Good Old Games, Amazon, Bundle Stars, Games Planet, DL Gamer, Win Game Store, and Funstock Digital. And that's just a few of them. Let's also not forget about the Humble Bundle, which features a selection of games from as low as $1. The best thing about having so many stores to choose from though, is that it means there is a lot of competition between them, which means they are constantly trying to outdo each other, which means that we get to save a whole lot of money, which means that it's pretty awesome. Some people might say, hey man, that's way too many sites to keep track of. I don't have time for that. Well, not to worry my friend, because you have access to resources like the Game Deals subreddit, which is constantly updated with the latest and best sales. On top of that, there is also IsThereAnyDeal.com, which lists pretty much every single sale from all the major sites. It's a very convenient way to quickly look up a game that you have in mind. And you know what? There's a very good chance that if there's a game that you're interested in, it's going to be on sale somewhere. Free Multiplayer Well, it's free multiplayer. That should pretty much sell itself, I think. But seriously, why should you have to pay a monthly subscription to play online multiplayer? Yeah, yeah, I know. PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold also come with other benefits, blah blah blah. 
but it's not right that if I buy a brand new game at full price that I should also have to pay an extra fee on top of that just to access a core feature of that game. I just paid full price, shouldn't that give me access to the full game? Well, apparently not according to Sony and Microsoft. So, unless you are playing certain MMOs, you will never have to pay extra just to access online on PC. And that's exactly how it should be. These are the key benefits that I have found during my time with my PC. Of course, there are many more, but this video is already going to be running pretty long, so what I'm going to do is rattle off a few more really quickly, watch Mojo Honorable Mention style. Mods have the potential to completely change the way you play games. Whether it be simple bug fixes, UI overhauls, graphics enhancements, adding in extra content, or maybe you just want to go batshit crazy. All of this user-created content gives you the ability to play exactly how you want to play. The ability to upgrade whenever you want to. No more playing games at 20 frames per second just because you are limited by your hardware. Save up a little money, chuck in a new graphics card, and just like that, problem solved. You can stream your video games to other devices around your house. This is similar to Sony's remote play, but much more flexible. You can use Steam in-home streaming to play your video games on an older, much less capable machine. Then hook that old machine up to your TV and you can play in your living room. If you don't have an older computer, then you can buy a cheap Steam link and get the same results. Or if you want to stream to your Android or iOS device, grab the Moonlight app, plug in a controller and away you go. An all around, much more capable device for media consumption. You will never have to worry about file incompatibility. Thanks to Steam Family Sharing, you can share your games with friends and family. Simply log into your Steam account on their machine and give it authorization to access your Steam library. After that, they will receive a full list of your games they can access on their account. The only limitation here is that if the host is playing games, they won't be able to access the shared library. So at this point, I understand that this is starting to sound like one big sales pitch for the PC. But the truth is that the PC is not perfect. It definitely has its downsides, and there are some features that consoles just do better. So with that being said, let's dive into the cons of PC gaming. The cost. So here's the obvious one, and it's the first argument most people are going to make against the PC. And it's true, to a certain extent, although I think a lot of people tend to exaggerate the expense of building a gaming rig. It's not uncommon to hear stories of people claiming that it's going to cost four or five thousand dollars. I mean, yeah, you could spend that much if you wanted to go all out on something extreme, but you don't need to. I spent 1400 Australian dollary dues on my machine, which worked out to just over 1000 US dollars. It's a very capable system, that's without factoring in the monitor, speakers and keyboard and mouse. So yeah, while you don't need to spend thousands upon thousands, the bottom line is that it's going to be quite a bit more expensive. And all of those console killer builds you see where guys advertise they can create a stronger system than a PS4 while also spending less? They're all bullshit. Mate, you can't build a system out of 50 bucks, a potato and an old shoe and call it a powerful PC. Seriously though, most of these guys rely heavily on sales and don't factor in the cost of accessories or the operating system. What I'm trying to say here is that the low price point of consoles is a very attractive selling point. And while a PC doesn't have to cost a ridiculous amount, the fact remains that it is still often much more expensive than a console. Missing out on console exclusives. I'll admit, this one hurts, and it's easily the thing I miss most about owning my consoles. The PS4, the Xbox One, the Wii U, and both of the handhelds all have quality exclusives on them. Especially if you are into story-driven games, this is something that's really worth considering. Uncharted 4, Bloodborne, Persona 5, Horizon Zero Dawn, Sunset Overdrive, and Xenoblade Chronicles X are just a very, very small selection of games that the PC will never see. The upside here is that Microsoft is starting to release the majority of its games across both the Xbox and the PC, and big companies like Square Enix are also starting to embrace it. So there is a high chance that the platform will see the likes of games such as Final Fantasy XV eventually. If it weren't for the exclusives, I would have absolutely no desire to own a console. But they do have exclusives, and as it turns out, a lot of them are really damn good. It's not always a social experience. This is definitely something I have noticed, and I'm sure my family has also noticed it. At least I would hope so, you know, if they care enough. Like many others, I have my PC placed in my bedroom, 
and it's not a coincidence that I'm spending a lot more time holed up in darkness away from any other signs of life and light. And I'll admit, sometimes it feels pretty isolating. I never experienced this with my consoles, because most of the time I was playing out in the living room where I was also actively engaged with others. Not only was it easier to socialize, but it was also much easier for friends and family to get in on the gaming action. Now, there's the old argument that you could just move your PC to the living room, hook it up to the TV, grab a controller, and kick back on the couch like it's no different to a console. This might work for some people, and that's great, but for a lot of others like myself, it's just impractical. While my PC looks incredible on my desk in my bedroom, it would be a bit over the top to have it light up the living room with all of its dancing LEDs. The other members of my family certainly wouldn't be too thrilled about it, and truth be told, I think it would look out of place myself. You can get around this by using something like the Steam Link to stream to the living room, and while this is an amazing feature that could be used from time to time, I wouldn't rely on streaming for all of my gaming needs. Upgrading It's not as bad as many people would have you believe. You don't have to be upgrading parts every year. It's going to vary depending on how satisfied you are with the performance of your system. But if you want to keep hitting that 60fps mark on high settings, it's just something you are going to have to do. Every 3-5 to five years, you are probably going to want to upgrade to newer components, and that's going to cost more money, no way around it. You never need to worry about this on consoles, well, for the most part that is, so that's just something else to consider. Game Ports Many of the games you play on PC are going to be ported over from their console version, and it's not always a smooth process. While some ports turn out absolutely amazing and are a joy to play, such as Metal Gear Solid 5 and Grand Theft Auto 5, others can turn out to be incredibly frustrating. Just go ask any Batman fan what they thought about Arkham Knight when it was released. Or if you really want to have a fun time, go boot up Saints Row 2 and thank me later. The majority of ports are going to be fine, but the fact remains that bad ports do happen, and can make for a terrible experience, especially if it's a game that you were looking forward to. They can be riddled with bugs, have unreasonable frame rate locks, not play well with keyboard and mouse, and sometimes games can be significantly delayed on PC. Whatever it is, it's not fun, and it's something that you will probably experience during your time with PC gaming. It's not as easily accessible. We live in a technology-driven world, so it's easy for many of us to overlook something like this. But the thing is, not everyone has the same level of experience, and something like operating a computer can turn out to be a daunting task for a lot of people. Another major selling point of consoles is that they provide a much more straightforward plug-and-play experience. Well, for the most part. The PC is a lot less restricted than a gaming console, but this also means that there is much more micromanagement. It's pretty rare that I would just boot up a game and play. Normally, I'll spend the first 15 or 20 minutes tweaking my settings. Then I'll play a little bit, decide I'm unhappy with my settings, go back, tweak them some more, play for a bit, go back, tweak more settings, play a bit, get frustrated, and then exit. No, it's not that bad, except when it is. Sometimes you might even need to install a patch just to make a game playable. On top of this, you need to make sure your drivers are up to date. And if something does go wrong on your PC, troubleshooting is not always a pleasant experience. That's just the trade-off though, you get a much more powerful and flexible system, but at the same time, you can expect to do a lot more management and maintenance. This is something that might be a little too much for some, or maybe you would just prefer the simplicity of a console, that's something you need to weigh up. Most games will be digital. This might not be a con for everyone, but for me it is. I love collecting stuff, and during my time with consoles, I had a huge game collection on my shelf. That's now gone, and that spot on my shelf looks completely soulless. And it's not like I can refill that spot with PC games, because physical PC releases are few and far between. So digital is basically the only way to go. Like I said, for some, this may be awesome. Games are cheaper, take up less space, and you can switch between them without having to change a disc. Also, most physical PC games don't even come with the entire game on the disc anymore. Instead, the disc will install a small percentage of the game, and then you will have to download the rest online. What the hell is this? So, digital games and PC go hand in hand, which is cool, but if you love having a physical collection of games to impress all the girls with, you are going to be out of luck. Well, that's my list of pros and cons that I have developed over the last six months of owning a gaming PC. 
for those of you that made it this far, I imagine you are probably thinking, this doesn't help me at all, I'm more confused than ever, can't you just tell me if it's a good idea? But that's a good thing, because we are talking about spending potentially over a thousand dollars here, so unless you are absolutely loaded with cash, which I imagine if you were, you wouldn't be watching this video anyway, this is something that needs a lot of consideration. Use this video, consider each of the points that I made, then re-watch it, and think about it some more. You should have a pretty decent idea of what you want to do. As for me, well, any regret that I did have was instantly washed away the moment I started playing my first game. Something clicked, and it just felt like this is the way I should be experiencing video games. Sure, there are still things I miss about consoles, mostly the exclusives. At some point, I know I'm not going to be able to resist the temptation of Persona 5, and I'll end up with another PS4. For now though, I'm completely satisfied with gaming on PC, and I can't imagine having to go without one. That's it guys, I know this was a long video, but I wouldn't want to base my decision of spending thousands of dollars around a 3 minute one. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, it took quite a bit of work, so if you did, maybe consider liking and subscribing. There's plenty more content on the way, but for now, I'll see you later.